This is episode three of the Embodied Performance Podcast. I am Nick Markey with Beach Barbell. We do physical therapy and performance training in Wilmington, North Carolina. Thank you for joining me today. Today I wanted to talk about pain. Um, There's a lot of different understandings of pain. Um, I see a lot of people, sort of myths you could say regarding pain. Um, So let's just maybe start with the beginning. So the traditional model of pain would be that you have damage in the area. So say that you have knee pain, you you have damage in that area, and then that damage causes pain signals to shoot up to your brain. And then when those pain signals reach your brain, your brain creates pain. Over the centuries and decades and whatnot, we've come to understand quite a bit more about pain with things that didn't make sense with that traditional model. Things like um, phantom limb pain. Uh, Phantom limb pain is where somebody may, you know, has an amputation, you know, so they don't have like a foot anymore for various reasons that could happen. Um, but they can have pain in those toes that don't exist anymore. We've known about this as far back as the Civil War, because with the Civil War, a lot of people had amputations because of, you know, bullet wounds and all sorts of nasty things. So if the traditional model were completely true, then they shouldn't feel pain in toes that don't exist. You know, and there are even people that are born without limbs, you know, born without an arm or hand or leg that can get phantom limb pain in basically air. Okay. So things of that nature and then other things like we've been dealing with maybe more recently, more chronic persistent pains widespread pains, just things that don't make sense. Now, that doesn't mean that pain can't mean damage. Certainly it can. You know, for example, you have a cut on your arm. You know, you feel something stinging. You look at it. You see there's a cut. You go, I got to take care of that. So you probably clean it up, put a Band-Aid on it. But most likely you don't feel it much after that unless you start poking the cut more. So what does that tell you? You still technically have the damage, but you don't necessarily have the pain after you've taken care of it. Same, another example would be, um, you know, the kid who's climbing on the monkey bars and falls off, lands, hits his um, wrist on the ground, you know, puts his hands out, and he's feeling a lot of pain in his arm. So he's holding his arm tight to his chest, protecting it. You know, they take him to the doctor, they get an x-ray, he's got a wrist, wrist fracture. So they throw a cast on him, you know, he picks his favorite color, blue. Um, doctor and all the nurses sign it for him, he's smiling. And he's probably back to running around within five to 10 minutes, probably doesn't feel much pain, if any, um, in that arm. Now, there's still that broken bone, but the situation's been taken care of. Even a smaller example is the kid falls off the bike, lands on his knee. You know, he's feeling pain in the knee, runs over to mom. Mom checks it out, maybe brush it off, make sure there's no, you know, serious gash or anything or abrasions, cleans off the gravel off his knee, maybe kisses it, who knows, and he runs right over back to the the bike. So maybe not really any damage, but um, he started to feel pain. So there's countless examples like these. And it's hard to say whether understanding pain more or less changes the pain someone feels. The, the, The evidence is so so on that. But I think there should be an important distinction between pain and suffering. Now, certainly there's a lot of people that are in pain, have pain, and are suffering. And what we should really be trying to do 
is eliminating suffering. Now, part of that elimination of suffering could be trying to figure out ways to help them with their pain. Um, but we, of course, don't want to do things that maybe put them in a worse situation. You know, a lot of people will, with back pain will go end up getting maybe back surgery and a lot of them end up with sometimes worse pain or no better pain, but now they got to deal with recovery from back surgery. So, and that's not to say that back surgery can help a lot of people. Um, it's just not the end all be all solution. So what I'd like to do is briefly explain kind of the modern understanding of pain in slightly technical, but I'm trying to keep, I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, basically you have, you know, the tissue out in the body, right? So you have bones, ligaments, arteries, nerves, um, muscles, skin, all that good stuff. So let's just say, let's just talk about the foot just to keep it simple. Okay. So you have the foot plugged into that foot are sensory nerves, sensory nerves, sense things. And there's different kinds that sense slightly different things. Um, but basically their, their role is to, to, to sample the environment to try to figure out what's going on out there. Okay. Try to figure out what's going on out in the world. Okay. So that sensory nerve you can think of it even like almost like a an extension cord so there's a bunch of them that plug into the foot okay and then that sensory nerve runs all the way up to the spinal cord to some level in the spinal cord different parts of the spinal cord serve different parts of the body so like your low back that part of the spinal cord serves your lower body and then your neck those, those, uh, that part of the spinal cord, cord serves your arms. There are channels up from the lower body that go all the way up to the brain too. Okay. So we have the foot nerve plugs into the, you know, the nerves plug into those go all the way up to the spinal cord. Then they plug into another nerve in the spinal cord, um, which runs all the way up to the brain and then in the brain, um, those there's a third plug, extension cord, nerve, whatever, um, that fans out to different parts of the brain. Okay, so basically you have three chains of nerves plugged into each part. Okay, coming down from the brain, you have what are called motor nerves. Motor nerves make you move. Um, you have two chains or cords of these. So one goes from part in the brain and then to the spinal cord and then from the spinal cord out to the muscles. Okay. So you kind of have a system that brings information up and then a system that tells the body what to do. Now, each part of that chain is important. Okay. So the stuff that's going on in the foot is important. The stuff that's going on in the nerve up to the spinal cord is important. The stuff that's going on from the spinal cord up to the brain is important. And then the stuff going from the brain to fanning out to other parts of the brain are important. All right. They're all working together. So what that means is that you have a bit more complicated of a situation, just like those other previous examples I mentioned can highlight that yes you can have damage in the foot and yes that can cause signals to go up those nerves and yes that can eventually elicit pain but it's not always so easy to figure out where that pain exactly is coming from you know is it five percent from the foot stuff going on in the foot and then 95 percent from stuff in the nerves you know is it 10 percent in the first nerve is it 25 percent in the second nerve and is it 50 percent in the third nerve it's it's hard to say 
um, always. Sometimes there is reasonably good evidence that the stuff going on, you know, they do an MRI or something and it's reasonably makes sense, you know, for what's, what we're, what the person's experiencing and then, you know, what the image says, but not always. And a perfect example is it of this is when they do studies of the back and, you know, they do an MRIs on thousands and thousands of people with and without back pain, you know, they find something like 40 to 60% of the people have a herniated disc in their back, which basically just means the um, gushy stuff between each bone in the back. It's kind of a, you could say it's almost kind of like a pillow. Um, Part of it is spills out and that can happen randomly. It can happen with an injury. Um, but if 46% have that, but have no pain, we can't always say that when we do an MRI that, and we see in herniated disc that that for sure is the cause of their pain. Now, the reason why that's important to understand is because of those nerves that go up into the brain. So all those different parts of the brain have a lot more function going on, right? So they have parts that deal with, you know, fear, anxiety, that kind of thing. Um, So if someone maybe is told, you know, hey, you have a bad back because we did an MRI and you have herniated discs and blah, blah, blah. um, Suddenly that pain takes on a whole different type of meaning and the body thinking trying to do its best trying to help you protect you may make you feel more pain and then this is where you can get to more of the suffering bit because maybe that person that was told they have a bad back instead of trying to gradually live their life more and more that the way they want it you know maybe they stop and we all know oh, I shouldn't say we all know but most people understand that if you're not active, you know, a lot of, a lot of, you get start to develop a lot of health problems, you know, physically and mentally. So now you have this person who's been told by somebody with authority, you know, like a doctor or therapist or chiropractor or whatever, um, that, you know, they have a bad back and they shouldn't do X, Y, Z because that's going to make their back worse or damage them worse. Well, it's understandable why they would have fear of what they're experiencing. And this really puts someone in a bad situation. So, and that's, again, that's not to say that some of those things in the back aren't contributing to the problem. They very well could be. But the fact that we know that there's a lot of people that have those same things but aren't suffering and don't have pain, um, we need to be... I, you know, as professionals, quite a bit more careful in what we tell people. And I'll cap it with, you know, sort of the inverse of an earlier example. So say that the kid falls off the bike, lands on his knee. And instead of, you know, the mommy being, um, you know, just checking him out and saying, hey, you okay? And you want to go back and play on your bike? And he says, yeah. And then goes and runs, runs his bike after, you know, maybe she kisses, kisses the boo-boo. Um, and he's fine. And he runs back. What if she goes, (gasps) freaks out, runs over, grabs him, you know, coddles him like a baby and, you know, is freaking out. It's like, Oh my gosh, your knee, your knee, your knee. It's bad. It's bad. You know, what is that kid going to feel possibly? Maybe he feels a whole lot more pain. And that kind of is what happens, I think, when someone is told you have a bad X, you know, insert whatever part that is bad because of whatever image that they have. So the best thing we as professionals, friends, family members, that someone is, you know, in pain and suffering, the best thing we can do is being supportive, you know, talk to them, reassure them that they're going to be okay and, you know, try to figure out what is it they want to get back to doing and try to help figure out how to do that. Um, 
Yeah. So I think I'll finish there. I'm coming up on 15 minutes, so I'm trying to not keep these too long. Um, and I'm, I'm probably going to approach this subject more later on because it's a very important subject. And uh, if you find it, of course, of some value, uh, uh, please, you know, like, react, share, you know, spark discussion. I love to – I really do like talking about this stuff. I'll talk anyone's ear off about all this kind of stuff. But, uh, of course, I'm trying to keep these uh, – <laughs> light and uh easy for the drive or wherever you listen to podcasts on your walk or run or drive or whatever okay so this is uh nick markey beach barbell wilmington north carolina reach out to me if you need help all right bye